has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to the Father and to Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John's first letter. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater. 
because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Son of man, can these bones live? They are all dried up. There's no moisture left in them. Decay, that vulture, has picked them clean. They're almost dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And they're almost there. Son of man, can, can these bones live, dry as they are? This is an important question. For if, if these bones can't live, nothing else matters. Even if you get a yes to, can the economy make a, a, a huge turnaround? If these bones can't live, it won't matter. Even if there's, there's a yes to, to can, can Im, unemployment improve? If these bones can't live, it won't matter. Even if there's a yes to, can my relationship be salvaged? If these bones can't live, it won't matter. For all of that, all of those are, are, are in this life, and this life is almost done. It goes very quickly. Even if you stop and look around once in a while, it still moves fast, and then it's done. And this, this for sure is your future. Given enough time, you will be bones. I can't say much at all about the future. Who know what's going to happen in 20 minutes, nonetheless, in 20 weeks or in 20 years. But I know for sure, and I can say with all certainty, that given enough time, each and every one of you will be dry bones. This is your future, so, son of man. This is an all-important question. Can these bones live? That is, can you, son of man, can you live? Can you, having died, then live? If not, then nothing matters. We need these bones to be able to live. We don't need some vague spiritual cliche about about how we're going to, to live on in the memories and the hearts of, of our loved ones. Because we won't live on. A memory is a precious thing to the person who's doing the, the, the remembering. But if we have died, then our future is, is in these dry bones. No, we don't need some vague spiritual cliche, like a, like a placebo in the face of death. We need these bones to be covered in tendons and in flesh and all wrapped up in skin and we need breath breathed in. We need these bones to live because we need better than vague cliches. So son of man, can these bones live? Not on their own, there's no shin bone that, that lies there by itself alive, separated from, from the knee bone and the hip bone and the skull way over there. No, the shin bone cannot live on its own. Can these bones live not on their own and, and not without breath? For even if the shin bone, the knee bone, the hip bone, and the thigh bone and the hip bone were, were all lined up and joined together, even if tendons, flesh, all wrapped up in skin. If there is no breath, there is no life. And not just any breath, but the breath of Almighty God. 
he does not breathe in. And these bones cannot live, and if these bones cannot live, we have no hope. And there is no point in any. These bones cannot live on their own. They cannot live without breath. Son of man, can this Thomas, called Didymus the twin, can this Thomas live? He's out there on his own. He's not, he's not listening. He's refusing to hear. He's refusing to accept the, the breath of God. Doubt that vulture has been picking away at him, picking away at his, flat, his faith. And given enough time, it'll pick it clean. For doubt is never satisfied. It'll just eat away and eat away until faith is gone. Until, and until Thomas is all dried up. Can this Thomas live? Not on his own. And so Jesus in love will not abandon him, will not leave him alone. The apostles are sent out. They go. They talk to him. They gather him in. And he who was missing on the first day of the week was there on the eighth, that second Easter Sunday. They gathered him in brought him together. He cannot live on his own. No Christian can live on his own. We are not meant to, to be on our own. None of us has just a personal relationship with Jesus without a relationship with other believers. There's no shin bone that has a personal relationship with the skull without the knee bone, the thigh bone, the hip bone, and on and on. And there is no Christian who has just a personal faith, just me and Jesus. To long for that, to, to go in that direction, to cut yourself off from the family of believers is to cut yourself off from Jesus. It's deadly. It was a terrible spot that Thomas put himself in by being away from his fellow believers. Doubt starts picking away and it will pick clean until you're left as dry bones. You are not meant to believe on your own. You're not even meant to, to really pray on your own. Jesus was, was teaching his disciples how to pray, and when he, he taught them how to pray, he gave them words to say. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, Our Father. Even if you go in your closet and pray by yourself, you pray when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you pray with others, you pray our. It's not just you and Jesus. It cannot be that way. Jesus loves you too much. So he's given you knee bones and thigh bones and hip bones so that you can be with them, so that you can be blessed. And even if we have to be apart from each other, even if we cannot fill these pews, even if we cannot kneel here side by side because that's, that's too close, it's not six feet. Even if we have to do all of this over the internet and, and just on the phone, we still have to have each other. And not just anything, not just us being uh, like-minded individuals, because like-minded individuals make their way into hell together, too. A whole bunch of bones, uh, even covered with tendons and flesh and, and wrapped all up in skin, is not a living being, unless there's breath. And this is what, you, what we need to be united around, the, the living breath of God, of the gospel, the good news. Jesus appeared to his disciples and he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you do not, they are not forgiven. This is the life-giving message. The message of forgiveness of sins. And this is what you are to speak to one another. 
do not simply talk about the weather and about politics and, and, and about other things that are going on in life. Do not simply speak about those things that will not matter when you are just dry bones. Speak to each other the gospel. Forgive one another. For when you do that, you are not simply imparting information or sharing your opinion. When you do that, when you say, I forgive you, Jesus died for you. It is not on your account. You are not guilty. Jesus loves you and he always will. You are a beloved child of God. You are God's own child in baptism. You can gladly say it. When you speak those words of gospel comfort to other people, it is not just imparting some information. There, Almighty God is breathing into that person the breath of life. It's more remarkable than when the breath came and all of them bones in the valley of dry bones started to rattle and come together and stand up and they were a vast army. When you speak gospel comfort to one another, it's more remarkable than that vision in Ezekiel. It's what that vision was pointing forward to. the fulfillment of that picture. It's the real thing. It's the breath of Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit working to give life where there cannot be life on its own. You speak Jesus to one another. You forgive each other's sins. Jesus is at work. Something remarkable has happened. Breath. Breath. The breath of God to make someone a living being, to make them a saint, to give them life for forever. If there's anything that you talk about with each other, let it be the gospel. And this Thomas lived not on his own. And so Jesus, Jesus in love would not leave him there. He would not abandon him to, to death and doubt. He would come to him. He would give himself to Thomas. See, put your finger in here. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. See, stop doubting and believe. Look at my precious wounds. I will not abandon you. I came all the way to the cross, into your sin, into your death. I will not abandon you to eternal decay. You will not be dry bones forever. You will live because I have died for you. And I come to you. With my precious breath, the words of forgiveness, I come to you and give you my own body and my blood in the blessed supper for you to eat and to drink there, though you do not see, blessed are you who believe. Blessed are you who believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that what you receive in the Blessed Supper is the body given on the cross, is the body that Thomas could touch. What you receive is the blood shed to give you life, to make you living beings, to give you hope, give you hope not just beyond the next 20 minutes, but beyond the grave, beyond the valley of dry bones, to give you life forever. Can these dry bones live? Can you, son of man, having died, can you then also live? Yes, because Jesus will not abandon you. He gives you each other. He gives you a message to speak. He gives you his spirit, his breath, his life-giving breath. He gives you himself. Yes, son of man, these bones will live. Yes, son of man, those whom you have buried will live. Yes, son of man, they can live.
is Jesus the Christ who died. Behold, he lives. He gives you peace. He gives you forgiveness. He gives you life. He gives you himself. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.